Well everyone, it's time for us to go and take a look at the Samsung Galaxy S24 and compare that camera against the iPhone 16. Now, these two cameras are a tiny bit different. I like both of them, I think they both bring a lot of stuff to the table. But the Galaxy S24 definitely, I think, is the one that might have a little bit more of an edge. But let's go, before we take a look at the photos and try to you know pinpoint exactly which one is better, let me kind of hit on basically the consensus of the hardware between these two. Now the Samsung Galaxy S24 came out earlier this year, and this one is giving you a triple camera setup, a 50 megapixel wide, 10 megapixel telephoto, and a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera with a 12 megapixel wide angle camera on the front. The iPhone 16 is giving you a dual camera setup, so a 48 megapixel wide angle lens and then a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera. Now the thing to keep in mind here is that the Samsung Galaxy S24 is giving you an actual dedicated telephoto lens. So you are able to go ahead and zoom in significantly more on something like the Samsung Galaxy S24 than from the iPhone 16. I would say for the average person though, the iPhone 16 still has like a pretty good lens, like it can still zoom in and zoom out quite a bit, but the Samsung Galaxy S24 has an edge when it comes down to the zooming and capability. On top of that, the Samsung Galaxy S24 has another edge. They both can film in 4K at 60 resolution, so 4K resolution at 60 frames per second, both on the front and the back, However, the Samsung Galaxy S24 can film in 8K resolution at 30 frames per second. No iPhone as of this point can film in those types of resolutions. The iPhone 16 basically taps out at 4K at 60, but it is really nice to have that type of you know, capability on the Samsung Galaxy S24. The iPhone 16, where this iPhone kind of takes some advantage at you know, from the hardware, is the fact that it's giving you an actual camera button that you can use. So this is actually very nice. So you can go ahead and use that camera button if you want to, to take photos and videos and zoom in and zoom out. It doesn't necessarily change the quality. It's basically the, it's just, you know, replacing that, you know, actually clicking on the, you know, home button or clicking on the, you know, photo button. But it's still a nice thing to have. And I do think at the end of the day, it is kind of a nice feature to have. But I would say when it comes down to the software between both the camera hardware the Samsung Galaxy S24 is kind of bringing more features and more capability inside of that camera than the iPhone 16. So that's that at a high level, right? That's kind of just trying to be as unbiased as possible, just looking at both. And I use an iPhone on an everyday basis, but still I have to give Samsung a lot of credit here. Now, the way these photos you know, worked, and I'll go and share my screen now, and you can see on the left side, these photos right here will be all the Samsung Galaxy S24 photos. The photos on the right will be my iPhone 16 photos. Now, a big thing to keep in mind here, I took these photos side by side, back to back, basically. As soon as I took one photo, I took the other, so there shouldn't be a change in the lighting condition. I tapped the focus on all of them on the subject I was trying to take photos of, so keep that in mind as well. Now, from the first bird's eye view, the first thing I was able to notice looking at both was that when I go ahead and zoom in on both of these, right? This iPhone 16s tend to kind of warm the colors out a little bit, which is nice. The Samsung Galaxy S24, I think it did a good job at lightening up the colors a little bit. But one thing I did notice, this is where I was tapping to focus on right here. If you look at the side, right? If you look at this particular flower here, you can see it depends on how you think about it. It looks to me that the Samsung Galaxy S24 attempted to blur this particular side of the photo, right? I think that's nice. I think if it was a subject photo, then I think that would have been better, and I think it kind of tried to do the right thing, but I do actually like how the iPhone 16 kept that in focus and it kept these two things in focus as well, right? I think the iPhone 16 usually does a bad job at cropping things out in terms of blurring, but this first photo, first photo, it actually did pretty good. The colors themselves look pretty nice too. You can see the background right here. Things look pretty much the same. There's not anything super insane going on here. I think both phones did pretty good. But I don't know, right? It seems to me that there's a little bit more blurriness kind of going on or some like graininess going on for the iPhone 16, but both look very good and I don't really have too much to complain about here. So both are, I would say, pretty good types of you know, looking photos when it kind of comes down to it. Now this next photo was just of the sky. Now you can kind of tell how both these phones kind of change when it comes down to the colors. From bird's eye view, you can see that the Samsung Galaxy S24 photos look so much more, you know, kind of saturated a little bit with the iPhone 16's color looks a little bit more evened out, I would say. Now, if we start kind of looking at these particular colors, so you can kind of see for yourself, in my opinion, I would probably say in real life, it looked more like the iPhone 16 here than it looked like the Galaxy S24. 
but I do kind of like how the Galaxy S24 went through and kind of like went to saturate some stuff. I think it looks kind of nice here and there. Let's go and try to zoom into like this particular spot, right? Like I know there's a change in megapixel count, but if you even zoom in this much, which nobody probably will, you can kind of see that both look pretty good again. I think when it comes down to both of these though, the colors is just crazy, right? Like there is such a big difference here in terms of the colors. And like I said, they were taken probably within like seconds to minutes of each other. So they were like right next to each other. It wasn't like it was three hours later. So that is kind of interesting too. I'm curious to see what's going to end up happening with these types of colors as they get, you know, different photos kind of come in. Now this next photo was of portrait mode. So all I did was just go and turn on the native portrait mode on both and I took a photo. Now, both look really good, I'm not gonna lie. I think both did a really, really good job. So the colors and everything are a little different. But one thing I wanna showcase, and this is the problem the iPhone 16 has, is if we go and take a look at the top left, right? You can see in my personal opinion right here, you can see that the iPhone 16 tends to go through and actually like blur out some of the subject. The Galaxy S24, that first photo, it's, it, it may have tried to blur it out or not, whatever, I can really tell. Or maybe you didn't think it was a subject. You can see that in some cases, like with this ear right here, with this particular portion right here, the Samsung Galaxy S24 does kind of tend to, or the iPhone 16 tends to blur out a little bit more what the actual subject is. Like I shouldn't go through and blur that out. The Samsung Galaxy S24 did a really good job, but you can see this like haloing effect on the iPhone 16. The most obvious one I was able to see is with this dog tag, right? If we take a look at this dog tag, there's no reason why this should be blurred on the iPhone 16, right? The rest of the photo looks pretty good, but the dog tag is part of the body of this person, right? It looks like it's focusing on the face here, but it's blurring out the rest. So this is an area that the iPhone 16 kind of has an issue with. However, I will say the iPhone 15, I had compared to in the 15, 15 Pro, didn't necessarily have those issues. So it's not all iPhones, it's just the iPhone 16s as of this point but that's a pretty big stark difference. And even the rest of this photo is blurred out here too. So if I'm taking a portrait mode photo, I don't want just the face to be, you know, just the one in focus. I want the whole body to be in focus. So that is the one thing that I did notice. Otherwise, both photos look good. I like the colors on the iPhone 16 a lot, but that is just one thing that I did notice between both here. Now this next photo is of leaves. Now, this is another thing that I did notice here too. When I'm looking at both, right, it looks to me, oh, yet again, that the iPhone 16 colors look a little bit, not the most colorful in the world, whereas on the Samsung Galaxy S24's colors look a little bit more brighter, they look more lively. And that is the one thing that I did notice, right? If you're looking at both, there could be a situation where the Galaxy S24 colors look a little bit more like, maybe like less real. The iPhone 16 colors look more sharper, they look a little bit more evened out, I would say. But I will say, even when you, I mean, the S24's colors, they either like hit or they miss. I would say in this case, they kind of hit, but on the sky one that I showed earlier with the trees, that one was kind of a miss. But I would say between both of these, they look good, but you can tell they look very different, right? This one looks like it was like kind of towards nighttime. This one looks like it was right in the morning. So the colors look a little off on, like there's just very different coloring. But I think I like the Galaxy S24 colors here more than the iPhone 16s. Now this next photo, nothing super crazy. And just from this glance, to me, the iPhone 16 already looks better because the bricks look so much more like it, like darkened a little bit, which is something I like. So if we go and take a look at like this particular portion right here, right? To me, it kind of seems to me that the coloring on the background, as well as the sharpening of these particular portions right here, do look very nice on the iPhone 16. I think the S24, once again, I think it did a good job at kind of highlighting things and making things look good. But I would probably say when it comes down to both, I would probably say the iPhone 16 kind of wins here, right? There's not really like an obvious like, oh my goodness, this one's way better than the other one. But I think to me, the iPhone 16 is probably the one that kind of wins in this particular perspective as well. Now, this last one is just of my hand. And I just wanted to kind of showcase how, you know, these colors kind of look and don't mind how ugly my hand looks. But you can kind of see for yourself, they both look pretty decent. You know, I can't really tell anything super insane, but the iPhone 16, I think does a good job at kind of warming out the colors. Where the Galaxy S24, you can edit these photos and make it look whatever way you want to, but this color looks a little bit more cooler, right? It's a little bit more of a cooler situation. Whereas on the iPhone 16, it looks a little bit more warmer, I think. And I kind of like the warming color of the iPhone 16 than the cooling color of the Galaxy S24. So overall, if I can kind of sum up this whole entire comparison, I definitely do think both of these phones have very good cameras inside. 
I think it's kind of like a flip-flop. It like to me, 50% of the photos on the iPhone 16 were good, and 50% of the photos on the iPhone on the Galaxy S24 were better. If I had to pick up one that was way better than the other one though, I don't know, right? I think the hardware of the Galaxy S24 is better. That one is just giving you more capability, just giving you more like having 8K in the telephoto lens and stuff like that is very nice. I think with the iPhone 16, this is a very good phone. And I don't have that much to complain about here with that phone, but I do think the potential is there on the on the Galaxy S24. But the iPhone 16, if Apple can just fix the portrait mode mishaps, I think that phone could probably get a you know more of an edge and probably be the better one here. So that's kind of how both these cameras kind of compare. If you have any other thoughts or questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out, Holden.